Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am driving the E39 M5 just to remind myself of what it's like to drive before we fit the wave track differential. Now I have experienced that diff on our F56 and it made a huge difference. Obviously that car is front wheel drive so it didn't have a diff in the first place and it helped massively with the amount of grip the car had and to manage the torque steer with a huge power. On a rear wheel drive car of any driven Ryan Stewart T92 M3 and I found it to be a bit more progressive than the stock one. Um, in this car it has a lot of power so I'm hoping the wave track is going to help put the power down a little bit better and maybe give us a little bit more grip out of the corners. So yeah I'm just um, going to put the diff in. We're, we're going to speak to Ash from Wave Track Europe. He's going to explain a bit about the differences between the wave track diff and a traditional one and hopefully give you guys a bit more insight into why they're better than traditional diffs so i'm just gonna head back to the unit now and let um hash and the guys crack on with taking this diff out and then we'll get down to regal and let them explain the differences between the wave track and traditional diffs and we'll go from there So with the diff out, we've come to Regal Autosport who are the European distributors for WaveTrack and the E39 and 5 diff is here ready for them to put the WaveTrack differential in. Now Ash, obviously everyone knows M cars come with limited slip diff, so can yep. you tell us, you know, obviously I see the benefit of fitting it to like an M Lite, an M135i, an M140, mm -hmm. they have an open diff, which is frankly rubbish on a rear wheel drive car, <laughs> so completely understand the benefit of fitting limited slip diff mm -hmm. to one of those cars but an M car already has a limited slip diff, so what would be the benefit of us fitting the wave track into our okay. E39 M5 diff, for example? So, um, particularly with like a, an E39 M5, you have like a, a plated limited slip differential, so it has like a certain amount of locking force. Mm -hmm. So generally with the um, BMW M differentials, it's in like the E34, E39, it has like a very low locking percentage, mm -hmm. and also has a very low amount of preload on it. Right. And the type of construction with like the friction materials, the glues and things like that inside it, um, it's difficult to keep the performance at a high level for a long period of time. Okay. And even then the performance level of that differential won't be as high as aftermarket ones, um, such as like Drexler, something like more motorsport orientated. Okay. Um, so with the wave track, you should be receiving much better performance on the throttle, um, in between the throttle coming on and off as well, especially in like wet weather performance. Okay. Um, so the car all around should be more consistent and much more drivable. Yeah, I mean, the only time I've experienced one of these is in Ryan's car. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of noticed it. It was a bit more progressive and a bit more controllable. Yep. That's, but I had a very brief drive of that mm -hmm. car. So I look forward to getting that in here and seeing yep. what the difference is. Even Ryan's car was with the heavy duty preload package mm -hmm. as well. So even with that set up, it was pretty progressive, which is impressive. him. Yeah, and you couldn't notice it wasn't factory, which is a good mm -hmm. thing. It didn't make any extra noise or anything like yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, we'll let you get on with this and you can explain the wave track features in a bit more detail. And I look forward to actually road testing the car when this is done. Yeah, look forward to hearing what you think. Okay.
Okay, so we've got a Volvo's E39 M5 axle on the bench. We've just opened it up to find that it's got an ATB inside. Uh, we're going to be upgrading it with a wave track. So we thought having the ATB here it would be a good opportunity to split it open and show you some of the differences between the wave track and the other ATBs. Okay, so we have the two ATBs split apart on the bench. We have the wave track and we have the conventional ATB design. So they're both similar in that they have housings, they have pinions, and they have gears. However, that's about where the similarities end. So starting off at the center of the conventional ATB design, you have the preload part of the differential. So these washers create the initial preload for the differential. However, this type of design has a problem in that when axle load is lost, drive is also lost. So it starts to perform like an open differential. Now axle load is lost in situations such as wheel slip, suspension unloading, and wheel lift. And the wave track design solves this. So in the center of the wave track, you still have the washers, which create the initial preload. However, what wave track have done is they've added an additional piece to the differential. And this is what we call the wave hub. So the wave hub works by sensing a difference in axle speed the axles go in here and when there's a difference in axle speed this starts to ramp slightly and what this does is starts to push out and creates enough internal load in the differential to continue to bias in situations where drive or load would normally be lost So Ash, thank you very much for taking the time out for fitting the diff for us and actually explaining the differences. Uh, hopefully that everyone finds it interesting and can actually tell the difference. I'm looking forward to personally getting this in the car and road testing it. Uh, so we're going to head back now. So thanks again and I will see you, where we're we going to see you next? See your players. Players in week. a couple of weeks, yeah. Cool. Thank Bye you. man. Cheers. See you later. So with the wave track fitted, it's time to go for a little drive and give you 
guys some initial impressions. I don't really know what to expect. Um, but I have been impressed with every car I have driven so far with a wave track in, which so far has been the F56 Mini that we have, and also um, Ryan Stewart's E92 M3. So this is our red um, E39 M5, it's in red, it's got a lot of evolved parts on there. I will do a separate video on the car itself. I know we've been meaning to do that for a while, but we had the diff to do and a few other things to replace on the car before we could get it back onto the road. But in general, I just love the E39 M5. It's such a great car even now. And this one is just solid. I'll explain the amount of work it's had done over the years so you'll understand why it still almost feels like a new car to drive just get around this truck. So it's time to hit some open road and see if we can feel how different diff is behaving. Typical we've got um, some gravel bit of road here so I've just got to get past this section before I can accelerate. This car does have a lot of power, it is supercharged so it's around 500 foot pound of torque and it did used to struggle with putting the power down um, as the boost was coming in. Uh, so let's see how different it is now. That's what I'm going to expect to happen is that it could just put the power down a bit easier without the traction having to kick in. Gotta love that V8 noise. So good. Yeah, so especially around the corners, coming out and putting the foot down, is the, the car's a lot more controllable. Traction's kicking in a lot less. Than it would have done before. Whereas before it would slide a bit more, it's actually gripping and making the car come out of the corner a lot quicker than before. So it's definitely an improvement over the stock differential. And at low speeds it feels normal, you can't tell that there's something different in there, it doesn't make any noises, it's comfortable, everything else feels as it should do. I was about to say it's a shame I can't get it on the track and show you exactly what it can do, but for me the E39 M5 is not a track car, it's a bit too big and heavy for that and this car probably is not one of them that's going to go on the track. But I think in terms of actually having an E39 M5 that's quite powerful and does struggle to put the power down, the wave track has made a difference to that in this even short drive that I've had. So that concludes the wave track installation on our E39 M5. I want to thank Ash from Regal for taking the time out to explain why wave track is different to the other differentials out on the marketplace. I will say that from my brief drive, the car does put the power down a lot better, not only in a straight line, but also around corners. This car does have a lot of torque, around 500 foot pound torque, and it did struggle before. If you had left the traction on, you could really feel it interfering. That interference is less, and with the traction off, the car is much more controllable. This car is quite special and has a lot of different parts on it and actually means a lot to our company. And we will do a separate video on the car itself and the modifications and its story so you guys can understand why it is special to us. Um, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, if you want to see more of this project, you can watch that over here. If you want to watch what YouTube suggests you might like from our other videos, you can watch that over here. As always, if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any questions for us, please drop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them for you.